Uh, yeah, go ahead, Yorka. Yeah, I'm just trying to load my GDK. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, we can also, yeah, no, no, go I, I, ahead. I have you. the page ready, Yorka, in case you want me to start first. Yeah, you can, sure. Okay, okay. Uh, let me share my screen and uh, then I can uh, show. Okay, uh, I hope uh, it is visible. So I okay. have uh, the DevTools sidebar open, so I hope uh, that isn't a problem because uh, I'm gonna also show the workflow in case request fails. So yeah, uh, the demo is about uh, this, uh, uh, basically a status badge that shows up uh, next to the uh, epic details, like the author and the open date for an epic. So it, uh, it looks similar to issues and MRs. And uh, we have moved uh, the delete action from header into the edit section. So if you edit any particular epic description, you would see a delete action from here. Right. And clicking here would delete the epic. I would open another epic and delete that one. Uh, so for now, uh, this close button here and here perform the exact same operation. And no matter which button you use to close the epic, it would reflect uh, on the UI across the page. So for instance, this is open and I click on close. Then as you can see that now the badge has updated. Uh, both the buttons have updated as well. Uh, it now says uh, reopen epic. Same thing goes for this uh, comment button as well. So for example, I want to close this, uh, reopen this uh, epic uh, with a comment. So I'll just say like reopening it again. And I'll just do comment and reopen epic. And uh, doing this will, as you can see that it has left the comment as well as updated all the badges. That's and uh, yeah. This is so, awesome. Really yeah, so this is for the, the the normal part. Now, what if request fails for some reason? So I'll just uh, make the page offline. And now if I try to close an epic, so as you can see that it goes into a brief loading portion where you would see a loading gif on the button. But then it would also show flash error like uh, it cannot be updated at this time. And this message is uh, very similar to what we have for MRs and issues as well. Issue it says epic, so it is consistent across all the three places. And now, if I resume the networking again and then again try to close it, and then you would see that it got uh, changed to reopen. Great. Now we can see the workflow of uh, delete an epic. So, so, for example, let me create a new epic because all these epics have certain dates uh, set because I need to test it with roadmap. So, I'll just create a new one. Sure. Uh, Say temporary epic. Mm -hmm. We create it, and there we go. Uh, we have it now. In the description, I click on delete, and it will ask epic will be removed. Are you sure? Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll obviously. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that yeah. is that new? Is that? Uh, I mean, no, no, no. The no, words no, no, are no. new, but was, so, the delete uh, is not new. But is the is the pop up new? Uh, 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 no, it is actually using browser's native alert. The reason why I need, uh, I have used this custom message. I was testing out something locally. Right. Uh, uh, obviously, I'll have to change it uh, now. But yeah, basically, it shows browser uh, alert instead of uh, model dialog. And this is the case for both issues and MR as well. So I'll have to obviously, uh, in case we want to use browser dialogs, uh, like the CSS style dialogs where delete button is in red. So that needs to be done across all three places instead of just one. So this is basically reusing the exact same thing as it is. Okay. But, so but even, uh, even the wording, is it, um, I'm trying to find an issue right now that I can delete. Is the... Uh, let me, let me uh, show uh, what the exact wording is. The only portion that uh, it doesn't have in the production is my man part. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's all I wanted to see. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Issue we remove. Are you sure? Yeah. I see that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah obviously. I so I have basically changed it in the main part. I just wanted to see if the code we'll changes check. that I'm doing are in the right place or not. Awesome. Yep. So, no, that's great. That's great. Okay. So if I click on delete and hit OK, then it would basically delete uh, the epic and uh, bring user to the listing page and would show the flash error like the epic was deleted. Yep. So this is basically the entire workflow and. Uh, uh, the last commit that I'll be pushing. So the code has already been reviewed from the front end once. I have addressed all the suggestions that uh, Phil made. Uh, so awesome. I'll uh, sign it again for review. But from the front end review wise, it is uh, good already. And except for that message part, any right. comment that uh, Pedro you have, then uh, feel free to mention it right away so that I can note it down and uh, do the changes.
Yeah, I think I think the only thing we need to look after it doesn't have to do with this issue is uh, standardizing the the deletion models so that we have that confirmation, yeah. not using the standard browser but using what we are trying to do in the future, which is to have models everywhere. Uh, do do we already have an issue for for that? Because I, I know we so. have so many issues for the models. I don't probably. Uh, uh, somebody created a, a bunch a while back, so yeah, there was like a big meta issue of a bunch. But I I, I don't recall seeing that one because I remember like fixing a lot of other ones, but don't mm -hmm. recall deleting because yeah. it's I, so I, rare. I, Nobody ever deletes issues, or, or okay, most users of Git GitLabers usually don't have permissions to delete. Not usually they don't have to, the permissions to delete CE and E issues, so that's probably why nobody ever remembers it. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Right? I guess so. Yeah, so I'll check I, it and if it's something that we can uh, uh, schedule yeah. so that it's standard throughout, uh, sure. I'll see how it is right now. Yeah, so I think uh, we have yeah. a single which, uh, which tracks basically all the places where we are using browser alert boxes instead of right. uh, Proper styled model dialogue, so I think uh, that issue is kind of uh, it. It should rather be an epic right now because it needs to track all the places where we are having these alert boxes. But yeah, that is the only uh, thing that remains and needs to be done. But apart from that, the feature is uh, ready and uh, That's awesome. yeah, yeah. Uh, now you can uh, demonstrate the slash command part. Uh, yeah, actually, I don't know what happens, but uh, the page is not loading, although the the GDK is running. Could could you just? Could yeah, we it's just the same branch. Could maybe it's the same branch. I think we could use this. Uh, your computer. Screen. Okay. Okay. Sure. 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 Then I can uh, try out uh, that uh, directly in my box. It's. I am sending you via Slack which commands you have to use. Okay. Sure. Okay, close and slash reopen. Okay, so it is pretty much uh, same as what we pass on as a status string. Okay, so like for example, this epic is open. Uh, let's try to <clears throat> close it. So we would just say close and then command applied. And, uh, okay, I think we need uh, to reload. Yeah. Yep. Reload. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. So this is basically the case. Like with slash commands, uh, we would have to listen for the changes and then uh, reflect it uh, across the UI. So what I can do here is that uh, so it it should be a rather simple change uh, to make sure that whatever status updates that happen even via slash commands get reflected on the UI. So it 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 sh it shouldn't be more than two lines of change to make sure that we do not have to reload the page every time we use a slash command to. But we don't. Um, that that would be great, Kushal. Let's let's check in a separate issue, especially since we don't have that for issues and merge requests. Uh, um, let me see if uh, that is the case. Uh, oh yes, yes. Like even even in issues, uh, it it doesn't work. Uh, we we have to reload it. Right, and and I, the what we I think we chatted about previously is that um, we would uh have system notes first. And so system, if you go to the epic, we have system notes for closing and reopening epic. So that's not in scope for this issue, what you and York have already done. Yep. Um, but having that, I think we should do that before the side panel. I mean, we could do, we could, you know, we should definitely log an issue. Um, but we're, we're, we're gonna have system notes. And, and the reason I bring that up is then, then we'll have feedback uh, for, for closing and opening. Um, and, and we will also have feedback if you use the button as well. I mean, you already do right now because it, it's obvious, but um, that will address it. Um, but what's, I guess uh, you said that it's it's fairly straightforward to update the sidebar. Is that just applied to epics or, um, because I, I, I remember we, we chatted about this for issues and then I, I don't know who I chatted this <clears> with. The other okay, people. so uh, so if, if uh, what you mean is that, uh, so for example, if I run any slash command to close or open epic, then in, in order to update the status badge as well as both these buttons, like mm. you think, uh, as far as epics are concerned, uh, it, is, it is a very minor change to do that. Okay. So that at the same time, what I feel is that not having uh, system notes for open and close events is something that we should prioritize instead of uh, doing this first. Right, right, right. Yep. Right now, so, yeah. 
So yeah, so there's a there's a couple of things. There's there's the there's the badges, or I mean, there's you're right. So there's the badges, there's the buttons, and then there's a sidebar, and then I think yeah, we should track those all separately. So maybe we let's let's have a separate conversation offline, or maybe are are you saying like all those are pretty straightforward, or just just for our knowledge, like and then what? and even like um so there's two pieces, right? There's the there's those there's those three places. There's but let me repeat. There's buttons badges and sidebar uh, in yep. terms of uh, scope and then in terms of functionality there's at least two ways I can think of it updating there's the way where it updates on the front end immediately or it updates in real time in the background um, because it's polling and then maybe there's a third way that I don't know of and why that distinction is relevant because if I'm looking at an issue and then somebody else updates the epic or issue or MR then those things will update like within seconds. So can you speak to, to all those combinations? Um, obviously, we're, we shouldn't do them in 11.4, but how yeah, much? So, uh, like, uh, as far as uh, so, uh, the case that you mentioned, like if someone has closed the epic uh, from other place, then uh, it, uh, whether it reflects here on the UI, I don't think that's the case. Uh, again, I'll have to check right, by right. actually doing that from a different browser to see how it works. Because polling does happen on this page as well. So ideally, it should be updating. But I haven't spotted right. any code, at least for this particular part, which uh, basically listens for uh, those polls and uh, updates the UI accordingly. So I'll, I'll have to check on that. But as far as like updating these buttons and badges based on any user action within the page itself is concerned, then uh, that is a simple thing to do. Right. And, and the reason I, I, I asked all that is I'm not sure that that's the... Um right design because there's an ongoing issue me i don't know if pedro knows updates because i haven't been watching too closely mate has been working on issue to figure out like um across the board gitlab how you save and stuff like that so i, I don't want us to do extra work if we're not going to use it or, or it's going to change very soon so so the idea like i mentioned like when you do an interaction on the front end you can if you don't have a round trip confirmation with the back end you can do a you can assume that it worked on the front end and update something right so whether you change a milestone when you assign a label where you change a status open close of an object you can do best you can assume that it worked on the back end and change the status immediately right and so i don't know if that's the correct design if we want to do that or not or do we want to wait for the round trip and if we wait for the round trip does it mean we only just have to code it one place which is just wait for the polling or do we like intentionally not pull but just block and wait for it to return so there's like three or four different ways to do it and then i'm not it's not clear from a design perspective which is which is the correct one so i don't, I don't want to add all this complexity at least to epics if there's no clear um design uh standard there yet Th does that make sense kushal like there's yes. all this all those possibilities yeah um, and so that's why I'm, i was saying like at least for system notes um, I know that at least it's already polling. Um, yeah. I think I'm pretty sure on the ep even on the epic. So we'll quote unquote get that feedback for free um, when we uh, when we do system notes for open and close because it'll just show up uh, once we get system notes. Um, um, yeah, but uh, Pedro, do you know? Do you have any immediate thoughts on that? Um, even if like the issue, the design the feedback. Is yeah, like, well, like on, yeah, yeah, like feedback, should it be instance feedback, should it be round trip, and then like, and, and all those different cases. Yeah, I think, I think it should be immediate feedback, because most of the times we're dealing with, uh, so for, for these specific cases where you're changing attributes of uh, an epic, or you're opening or you're closing, like most of the times when people are using GitLab, they already have an active connection. So I don't think there, we're going to have that much problem with people um, not having, like doing work offline or something like that. So we, we should just do it. Uh, but at the same time, we should have some fail-safe mechanism so that if the person um, tries to, I don't, I don't know technically how it works, but if the person leaves, like closes the browser window, would it uh, affect the, the, the requests? And if so, we need to have some some mechanism to make sure right. that yeah. So I didn't uh, even think of that. Know that they are yeah. not allowed so, to, uh, to exit. So, so the, the 
the experience that uh, Pedro has mentioned. So right now in GitLab across any page that you visit, we have this reactive approach instead of proactive. Like we always wait for network to come back with a response and then we update the UI. We have this mm -hmm. intermediate state where we would show a loading uh, animation or we would say like something mm -hmm. in progress, but we wouldn't directly jump to a conclusion like this uh, request completed successfully. And then for some reason, if request fails, like uh, uh, the connection dropped off for a second or two, then we revert back to previous state. That isn't something that we already do. Uh, we always wait and show intermediate state, like, hey, something is happening. And then once the uh, response is successful, we uh, then update the actual state. So if we want to do the pro proactive approach, it is more of a design decision, uh, like whether mm -hmm. we want to do it across the app or not. So, yeah. I, I, think, I think we will still have the, the case of an intermediate state, uh, because intermediate state here is, let's imagine that you change the labels on this epic. Right, right now there are no labels, you add some labels. Uh, what we're saying is uh, you, we would immediately, so like this design here, I think it's a good one, what just happened. Like the labels were immediately added, uh, even though the server is still communicating. So we're not waiting for the reply back from the server to show the labels or I to- I think we are, I think uh, we are, I think we are. We're like waiting for that? Uh, I, I'm just, well, maybe Epix is different. I'm looking at an issue. Labels wait mm. for the spinner. Assignees do not. Uh, milestone waits time. Uh, so it's, in, in, it's I, I've checked this multiple times in the past. Like the sidebar for issues okay. is inconsistent. Um, so that, that's why I've been. <clears throat> let's, let's try it out uh, right now. Like for, sure, for sure. instance, I, I have slowed down the network. So, okay. uh, so the request should take some time. But yeah. meanwhile, mm -hmm. See if uh, the labels got added on the UI or not. Yeah, see, so, yeah, it's yeah, waiting. Exactly. Right? This is the problem, okay. right? So what we want okay. here is to immediately show the labels, but still have that feedback indicator that right. it's and then, loading. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, try for Apex. Uh, yep. So Apex is the reverse, right? Yeah. Yep. So because it's a it's a it's a view app, right? Like it's a separate view app, like you said. Or you've told me multiple times in the past. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the sidebar implementation is entirely different. And then, and then, um, if you so look like, at uh, assign, if you look at assignees for issues, it's it's uh, instant, and not and yeah. it doesn't do doesn't wait for round trip. Yeah. So like and for instance, that, right? right now, right now while uh, demoing, what I did was I just turned the page offline. Okay. Uh, and then I tried removing the labels. Then it. It shows flash error, like the uh, label. Right, right, right. Uh, that's a round trip. Yeah. And, and we are stuck in limbo, and it shows like the uh, loading animation is still going, network has failed. So this is like the actual problem that we already have in production. Like we ideally, we should have this loading animation go away and then let the labels be as it is. But we are still showing this animation in place. Yeah. So yeah, so I, I want to do this, but I, I, I also want to wait till we have consistency but at the same time yeah. we're, we're never gonna we're it, it, sorry, it sorry, looks sorry. like you guys continue give me a second it looks like what you were just showing kushal that uh, for some reason because it's a view app we already have this done for the labels in epics yeah the, so maybe the, the problem uh, yeah actually the problem is uh, the the entire structure of the epic app uh, needs some uh, serious restructuring right now which is why these are like small places where we haven't noticed what is going on like for example this one as you saw like the animation was still showing up in, even if network request was failed so this is more of a structural problem i feel because there are many small areas of code that i haven't uh, debugged through and through so yeah so is it something that uh, you said it was a serious structure issue? Do you, is it something yes, yes. you want uh, to like, tackle? Yeah, yeah. Right so, I have, uh, so I'm not sure if you got a chance to see this particular uh, issue. I have created one which uh, is related to <clears throat> the structure of uh, the Epic app. And uh, it is currently in discussion. Like I have been discussing it with Andre uh, in our one on one as well. Like right now, I have just uh, pulled up our one on one document. And uh, here I have, uh, let me ping this uh, issue in uh, the Zoom chat. So. Cool. And so, so is, is there a, is it possible to, 
to schedule this issue or are you still discussing so it, how it, you're it, going to tackle it? Depends on, uh, it depends on whether Victor uh, can allocate uh, me working on this one uh, partly and partly on the actual features because yeah, it, it, it will take some time. At least one update will be required if I were to work uh, on it full time or if I were to work it uh, like partially like uh, along with all the features that we plan for the existing app if we want to do this restructuring as well then uh, it, it will take at least two updates although uh, right now uh, I have uh, already started uh, doing the groundwork for the restructuring like no matter when in the future we decide to do the restructuring but whenever we, whenever we do do it we shouldn't have much to work on uh, so for that I have already basically started restructuring at least parts of code based on how the needs are. So for example, uh, to do this close epic uh, feature, uh, we had to spin out some changes like creating a global service instead of uh, using the one which Sidebar already has. So like uh, I have basically started laying the groundwork for it. So uh, whenever we do decide to schedule it for any particular release, it, it should be easier for us and it should be less time consuming because the groundwork is already there. Uh, sorry, Kushal, since I just came back, is this for Epics only? The uh, the uh, this, uh, yes, yes, it is, it okay. is just for the, the Epics shell, not the list, because the Epics list part is something uh, that is not a view app. It is main okay. Hammond application, and, and we do not even need a view application here. Only okay. portion that is view app is this new button, and it is very small thing, so it, right. it's, it could be right. just half a day's effort to restructure this particular button drop down thing. And okay. uh, of course, when, it, when, it, when I uh, say like we want to restructure the thing, the roadmap and uh, Epic Shell are two different things. The roadmap is in good right. shape. Or we do not need to right. touch that. So, so, so your issue is, the scope of your issue is just the Epic page itself? Yes, yes, just, okay. just uh, this shell part. And also uh, like most of the portions in the sidebar are reusable. So for instance, this entire portion that you are seeing with the dates and radio mm -hmm. and everything, it is already created as a standalone component. So if I show you the code directly, then in the Epic, uh, uh, the sidebar folder, we have this called uh, sidebar date picker. Right. And this component was written from scratch based on the design uh, that we right, had. Right. Yeah, obviously. And we, and, and we will be reusing this file as it is. Uh, we won't okay. be doing any changes. So everything that is written for this file, be it the structure or the tests for this file, will be reused as it is. The only portion is like uh, right now the sidebar is like entirely different folder in which it right. has the thing called sidebar app and then we have uh, epic show and then there is this new epic. So this structure okay. doesn't feel right to me and it basically makes our lives difficult to add any new feature because right. the way it's are written for this entire structure are quite complicated. So, so, uh, so yeah, a quick, really quick question. So right now, the only view app on the page is the sidebar, and then the in the middle is oh, like HTML, whatever. Yes, yes Rails yes. stuff. And then what no, you're proposing? This, this isn't the Rails stuff. Uh, the, this this particular portion, the, the the description and the header part, this isn't Rails. It is okay. a view. Th those are view, but they're not view apps. They're view com components, right? whatever that means. Uh, yeah, in a way, yes, because uh, the entire application lives in this single folder called Epic. So, I see. And under and that, so would the, have, the whole thing be one view app? Is that, I mean, I don't, I don't think it really matters. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. So it is more of a file reorganization stuff where I would also be updating tests to make sure that the structure is same okay. and is scalable. Uh, so right now, if you go to roadmap app, then anyone who comes to do any changes into the roadmap app, just by looking at the folder structure would know that which particular file is responsible for what. Like, right. for example, app view is the main shell. Then there is this roadmap shell which renders the skeleton of the entire page. Then right. if I want, if I were to check like what a typical timeline would look like, then this epic item would represent a single epic item. Then epic item timeline would represent that blue bar. So like it is more of a semantic change. So anyone who wants to start afresh working on mm -hmm. any change of the roadmap app, for them, uh, it is much easier to understand what is going on, uh, which is not the case in case of uh, these epic items. Awesome. And so if you can go back to the issue, sorry, I'm just putting it. Are you, uh, sorry, I, I, I came back, I came late. So did you uh, revise Epic page? Did you have something? I, I think I asked you something there on the issue, right? Or Yeah, yeah. Uh, revise. So your question was like, how fast uh, would it uh, enable us to add new features to the Epic page? Yeah, I think, you, didn't you answer that? I 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've already uh, answered like at least 50% faster because right now most of my time right. is spent uh, writing the test uh, just due to the sheer complexity of how the text tests are structured. Not okay. because uh, the testing a particular feature is hard, but the way the app is structured, updating. Uh, so, for example, if I add a new item within the page, then I would have to touch multiple files just to make sure that the entire feature gets tested. Okay. Because the way the tests are structured for this particular uh, app, that is the problem. But yeah, if we revise the structure of the app, then we would also be revising all the tests for that app, and uh, then it uh, is much easier to do any changes because we only have okay. one one mapping of every feature versus the test for that feature. Makes sense. And so my my last question there was that um, can you create individual issues? Are you saying that you want this to be one one issue? Yeah, so like uh, even if we break it down to multiple issues, what we can do is like we can create one issue for like revise the shell structure. But in any case, the end result would be the actual app once it is ready. And uh, the, the proposal, as I have mentioned, like was that we would have uh, a way to toggle a switch between the older app and a newer app. And uh, for, for like a week or two within master, both the application code bases will be living. And right. uh, once we have uh, the master deployed to dev.gitlab.org, then anyone can go ahead and uh, just toggle the switch and uh, see how the new application performs and works. Visually, there is there won't be any difference. Mm -hmm. it, will, it will look the same. Just behind the scenes structure of the app would be different. Uh, so that was the idea. So even if we break it down to multiple issues, what would happen is that all those issues will get closed as soon as we uh, hit merge on that. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So let, let me ask not 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 uh, not in terms of issues, but like well, it, we we should do our stuff in terms of issues. But are you saying that we cannot break this up into more than one merge request? We uh, uh, for merge request, no, no, we we cannot. So everything has to be done in one merge request. And sorry, I wasn't totally understanding. Uh, you said that the two, you know, we chatted about this in the issue. You said if we have two. So I'm reading what I wrote. Yes, of course, we make it blah blah blah. Um, if we have two view apps side by side in the code, mm -hmm. so so what what were you saying? Like, um, would that be in GitLab.com? Would it would that be in production to have both view apps? Or uh, so uh, uh, so so uh, what would happen is that uh, obviously we won't be merging it right before the freeze day, right? Because that would uh, mm -hmm. uh, that would make it available on GitLab.com as well. Okay. We do not want to do that. So what I would do is that I'll make sure that the merge request that we are aiming becomes due twenty second thing. Right. And uh, gets merged by 22nd of the month, so we still have like uh, 15 days between 22nd to 7th uh, of right. the month. So within that time frame, we do not anyway deploy code whatever that is in the master into the GitHub.com. Uh, it all always gets deployed on uh, dev.github.org. So that what is where we get. Yeah, no. Well, I mean, dot org won't have this code. Dot org is. Oh where... yeah, it is. It is community edition. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so on the on the staging, it might be yes, but otherwise, then it, in that case, what would happen is uh, only devs will be able to access it who have GDK access. Because, okay, so uh, you want you want and, and the reason you want to do that is just you want more testing. Yes, yes. Uh, well, well, I mean that's fine. We can we can uh, do more testing ourselves and not too worried about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you want to do that strategy to, to have two apps and then hide one and then we can we can test it. I think we can all support. We can get Ramya to help as well. So yeah. I'm not. I'm not worried about that. Uh, I'm just uh, concerned about uh, the scope of work required. And then you're saying it's it's one iteration. Yeah. Is it is it one iteration of of so I'm of one uh, person so full time or uh, is it yes yes so like again uh, I'm basically giving the time frame uh, moderately. Like uh, I'm not basically you know. Uh, squashing in a lot of effort in like a certain release. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure like if something comes up, be it uh, on the portfolio management itself, like right. uh, la last week we, we found out it's like the, the sidebar idea. wasn't uh, hiding uh, for yep. uh, unsigned users. So if something like that comes up, I shouldn't uh, be, you know, uh, blocked right, right. because I'm working on this one. I, I should be able to jump and uh, fix the issue at time. Uh, okay. But yeah, if if I were to work on this like full time uh, with complete focus, it it might not even take one week itself because uh, most of the stuff is already isolated. So all the sidebar items uh, specifically are isolated and can be reused as it is without doing much changes. Okay, so let's let's do the following. Let's um, I I think we're going too slow, and that's not your fault, Kushal. It's we have too little people. 
working on yeah. portfolio management. So mm -hmm. I, I've been wanting to get um, uh, I've been wanting to get Andre to to see if we can get more. Like right now on the plan team, there are three front end developers. So there's yourself, there's Fatih, there's Constance, and then like Fatih's not even here this month, so I can really feel it, or every, everybody really feels it. So we have like half the team you doing portfolio management and the other half the team constant doing everything else. And that, that's crazy to put all that, um, all that effort on Constance to support the rest of portfolio, uh, rest of plan. And then even if Fatih comes back still, I think it's too little. And then because we're, we're essentially one third of the team is doing uh, portfolio management, which seems like a lot, but we're still going too slow in my opinion. So to me, it, it's not the fraction, it's just the, the base of the fraction, it's which is three. Yeah, yeah, it's three. And then like you compare backend developers, we have like six or seven. Um, so I, I wanna understand where we are on that. I think Tim was on vacation when I looked at his calendar. So um, I, I don't wanna keep dragging this, uh, Kushal, so please keep pinging me, but like let's do the following so that uh, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a to do action item. So ping Andre. Okay, I'm writing something down. Uh, so so Andre will have one on ones with Tim, right? So uh, I'm gonna ping the uh, plan channel, probably plan channel, and I'm gonna CC you, Kushal. So make sure that I do that. Like if you don't see something in the next like twelve hours. Um, ping me there again. And then what I'm going to do is say, um, uh, Andre, I, I think we need more, you know, front end developers because our roadmap is amazing and, um, we should move faster. And especially Kushal says that we really need to fix this. So I think, um, you know, whether we have a short term plan or a long term plan to address this, I, I want to see if we can get more people working. And so whether that's yourself working on this Kusha or, or somebody else. Um, no, no, I'll, I'll be working the structure because now that I already know what okay. parts behave how. So. so then like that, that's fine. I mean, obviously I shouldn't care, um, which I don't, um, but I don't want to slow down. Right. So, yeah. So, so I would like love to have like an iteration, even if it's a, um, if it's a temporary one, where we have we borrow another front end developer and and they're still moving ahead with portfolio management and you're guiding them but your head's down focus on the refactor like something like that I would be super happy about I want to see how possible that is and then we're still like a week or two away from 11.5 so I would love to do this in 11.5 I'm sure like you would as well so yeah. I I really want to make this happen um, I don't want I don't want like you and Fatih working on portfolio management and then just Constance working on plan. <laughs> um, but maybe we have to do that. Like that, that would be really crappy if we needed to do that. So I don't, I don't know what, what we'll do. Maybe that's not too bad because the rest of portfolio management for the year is, is like, if you look at the 11.5, they're like continue like system notes and, and, and like other cleanup stuff. So they're not super new things. So maybe that's not as terrible so that you can guide the person. Um, yes. So maybe that's a good strategy as we do cleanup work. You're also doing refactor, so it's not net new, like crazy difficult new things that needs a lot of time from from uh, Pedro to review. So maybe. So I think we really should do it sooner rather than later. I mean, for for more reasons than that, we don't want. To <laughs> yeah. That, right? um, okay. So yeah, like uh, keep me honest, Kusha. If I don't respond like in twelve hours, yep. or, or sure, you can start sure. start a message if you want. But uh, I'll definitely get to it today. For my sure. time. And then, so uh, we're, we still have some time. So uh, back to the, before I ran away, 30 second really quick story. Uh, this hurricane that was supposed to blow by my house never did. Um, so it's the one in the Southeast US that you've been seeing. And there's one in Asia, which is affecting, I, I don't know if that affects you, Chrishell, but it's affecting some of my other families. So it's it really weird, like everybody's getting blasted <laughs> with various hurricanes. Um, but like this one didn't affect me. It was supposed to fly by Richmond, Virginia, where I am at last Thursday, Friday. So the, the town closed, like everybody was like off school, but it was like, we're like a really small town and everybody's really conservative and like, oh, close the schools and everything, but like nothing happened. So like parents brought their kids to like the museum, I, I heard it, but like the schools were closed. So it was really funny. But then Monday, which is yesterday, all crap went to whatever, right? So I can't use bad words, <laughs> this is recording. So like <laughs> around lunchtime, my time, like 
crazy tornadoes and then touched down at least one of them. One, I think when I checked the news yesterday, one confirmed fatality. And then like houses were like, like being destroyed. Thank, like for me personally, I was like minimally impacted because I was working at home. My wife was stuck at school. She teaches at a university. So she, she came home like an hour late. Um, so, so like that's not actually relevant to why I had to leave for five minutes. But the, the power, or indirectly, really, the power went out for like 15 minutes. And then so, so every, like it came back on. But then um, my wife was just going to work. And then the garage door was, couldn't like open because it's electric, whatever. So because everything was reset. So then I ran downstairs and then like, thankfully we got it fixed really quickly. We just had to press the button. So that's my 30 second story. So it was, it was just really crazy last night. I was freaking out. Um, but this is like all after work, like there was like crazy tornadoes and stuff, but everything I think is gone. I haven't checked about it. Did you get to some water bottles? Because you I said did. No, that, that was last, that, that was the crazy thing last week. That was the Thursday, Friday where nothing happened. So it was like Tuesday, Wednesday, the town was freaking out. And then Thursday, Friday, nothing happened. But like, Tuesday, Wednesday, everybody cleared all the like packaged water. So I went to Walmart, went to like a grocery on Tuesday, Thursday, and it was like all gone. And then I went, I think Wednesday night again, or Tuesday night again, and then reloaded and they had some. So I still have a bunch of water and canned food. Um, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Anyways, so um, the sidebar, so, so what, are, are we just gonna wait for the design on, on uh, Matei's thing or, or do, are we gonna schedule some issues? Like what, what do you want to do, Pedro, from a design perspective on, on all that feedback and all that? Um, I, I think it's better if we, if we close that issue out. I know he's going to write some things for the design system as well, some guidelines. Okay. So I prefer if we close that, make sure that we've, because the last time I checked, uh, he didn't account for some of the scenarios, like for right. example, the, the error states that I was just showing, like for yeah. some reason you have a bad connection and it doesn't, it's not able to update the sidebar. What okay. happens? What do we show? And I want to make sure we have all of that accounted. Uh, I know that he worked on some of the uh, intermediate states. So when some information exchange is happening, what we show to the user, but I think uh, I have to review it because I'm not sure if we are being as aggressive uh, in a good way as you were suggesting, Victor, which is right. to immediately show the change. Oh, and right, I think right, that's, right. that's yeah. great, right? Like, assuming um, that the connection. Or, or, or at least, yeah, yeah. Uh, even, even, if, even if the connection is not working, right, we immediately show it and then we check for the connection. Right, right. Then we check if it, uh, because I think we, it's better if we are, um, if we make it really perfect for the most cases, which yeah, is people having a solid exactly. connection, exactly. right? Exactly. And then we just show the, the change. And then for other people that don't, don't have such a good connection or for some reason it's an error state, uh, right. but yeah, too bad. But I think we should optimize yeah. for the best. Oh, yeah, I, I, I totally um, agree with that, yeah. But so this, this is just to say that I, I don't think we should do anything right now, right now. Uh, but once he gets that in, the, I think the, the sidebar is probably, he, I think, I know he's, he wants to work on something for the settings pages. Like that's one thing. And the other thing that we can do in the plan team once that issue is closed is then to create an issue where I can, me or Annabelle, we can follow through with those guidelines on the sidebar. Yeah, let's exactly, wait. exactly. Yeah, yeah, because we have, we, the plan team covers a lot, right? We have issues, we have uh, epics, and then merge requests, I assume a lot of the code is similar to issues, so we should probably do it as good stewards of GitLab anyways, if we do issues, yeah. right? So, um, right, right, right. Okay, so yeah, so I'll, I'll look forward to that. Yeah, so I, I also agree it's not, that with the system notes, I'm not too worried about it. It, it sucks, but it's not like, it's, like, it's not like a really super bad um um but it's also like something we should fix because we've been living for it forever for issues and merge requests um okay so so that that's all i wanted to know about that one yeah sorry i'm jumping around we we demoed quick did we demo quick actions already um oh, okay. yeah we did okay so i'll watch a video or if i if i didn't see it um and then so the only thing i see remaining for due 22nd is the list views um are do you think we can still get those in by Friday or is that? Uh, I'm not sure because it depends on the merge request that is still in review and there are still at least 
Uh, on front-end side, I'm not sure, but on back-end side, there is still database review pending and okay. uh, maintenance review pending. So, so okay, based that, on that, we need to build the second one, which still we uh, need I some see. reviews. So, so right now, there's one, only one MR, or is there like two? Uh, there's one MR that covers all the features except yeah. uh, the list view, and then yeah. uh, we can't do the list view yet until that MR is, is merged. Um, yeah. Or at least you want to know the results of the of what people are saying in the review, and mm -hmm. how to create it. Okay. No, that's fair. Um, so no, that, that's otherwise that that's great. I think we're making awesome progress. Everything looks awesome. Um, and then let me take a quick peek at. So if we look at our agenda and we look you look at, um, I just want to see what's the rest of eleven point four. So we have the view list. And then uh, the rest, we have one bug, which has been assigned to Chantel, so it's not you two. And then I don't think we have much more, right? We have the rename date fields. I think that's the, um, that's the other big one, right? And then we have the unsubscribe, that's the error of the epic. So I think those are the only remaining two things, in addition to the view, right? Which ones? So I'm looking, so let me share my screen. I'm look, yeah. just looking at the um, portfolio management issues for 11.4. So if you can, so we don't have not functionality yet in the search, right? So I can't take away the do 20 second ones, but you can filter it in your brain. Um, and so the, I'm just looking at what's remaining for 11.4. So this one is remaining, um, but this has been assigned to Chantel, so it's not Yarka or Kushal's responsibility at least um this one is also chantelle's working on it uh and it's coming yeah, I, I i think she might need some help but i i haven't talked to her i just think that it's okay. it might be a bit tricky but yeah. this one okay that's fine yeah no no let, let's let's manage it i, I just want to yeah. just get a pulse on provided that these are assumed being taken care of by somebody else uh, where like where do we stand and then I think where we stand is this one do you, do you anticipate this is like a, a big one Yarka or is it like you, it, it's just being blocked I think it's not a big one I think it's not a uh, small one I think it's, it's <laughs> like something in okay. between but not too big I mean like rather smaller than bigger but not like small that okay. you're doing oh, right, right, right. two hours right 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 understood yeah um yeah no, no I'm just trying to see like what's remaining so it, it seems like uh this is remaining and then this one right so 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 there's a bug so bugs can be big or small like 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 we found out with the the attachment when it was really big um but hopefully this is not not too bad and then mm -hmm. Uh, we have this one, which seems big because all the autocomplete stuff usually gets complicated when in, in the experience I've seen in the past year. And then there's this one. So are, are you folks still comfortable with the rest of 11.4? Um, yeah. Sounds, seems fine. It seems, seems okay, right? Okay. Yeah, no, okay. That, that's all I wanted to, 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 to check in with you folks on. on. Um, but that, that's all I have. Anything else you, want, you folks wanted to discuss? No. no. All right. Um, all right. So I will put this on YouTube again if there's no uh, disagreement. And other than that, thank you for your time. And we'll chat um, in Slack. And I'll, I'll do that thing first, Kushal, because I have 15 minutes until my next meeting. Yeah. So I will, I will chat in that thing. Go ahead, Pedro. Just one final question. So Please. regarding that uh, issue of uh, refactoring that Kushal was showing, yes. I understood two things. So one of them that doesn't have necessarily to do with refactoring would be to somehow discuss and talk with Tim about the necessity of having more front-end developers for Plan, yeah. right? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I think it's a great opportunity to illustrate to people like Andre and, and, and people who hold the keys to these things to say that, you know, this is really important. This is an example of why we need more people. Uh, yeah. That, 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 that's all, in that sense, it's related. But you're, I, if you're alluding to the fact that it's not technically related, because we always need more people. That's also yes, I mean, we always need more people. But uh, I think a good point 
uh, about it is that Kushal created this awesome issue to refactor and to restructure and make sure like we mm -hmm. have a solid base to grow on. Um, right. And it should be done because even with three people, if we are only focusing on uh, new features and like right. doing new things and not looking back and making sure that everything is okay for mm -hmm. better growth, uh, we're not going anywhere, right? I think we can all agree with that. So well, we, to end up yeah. with well, we don't that. have to argue about that until we have to, right? is, my, is my response. <laughs> like are, you're saying like, if we don't get the people, we should still do it is, is what I'm hearing, right? If we don't have no, them, we shall. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you're arguing that we're going, uh, that we could be going faster, right? right. Uh, and that has to do with the fact that we don't have more people. But yep. at the same time, even if with the people that we have, it's difficult for us to afford uh, allocating someone just for the refactoring of something, which I think we should do. Like, it should be a balance. And even if it's only 20% right. of Charles' time, I think for sure uh, he should be doing refactoring of, of things that he did yeah. in the previous release or something like that. And, and um, I mean, that that's comes back to my earlier question with Kushal, like, can, can we split it up, right? So yeah. if we can split it up, then it's, it's, it's a little easier to manage in terms of risk, right? Like not risk of not being done, but like risk of, well, we're not shipping new things. Um, you know, we can you slowly get it in and then we're still moving forward with the product. We're still, still getting feedback from the community. Um, we're not slowing down. Sales folks still can sell GitLab, that type of thing. But because this is a big thing, there's immediate risk with it. Yeah. So that's why um, it, it should be managed uh, as such. But uh, no, I, I don't disagree with anything you're saying. Uh, and then, at the same time, I think we should keep, this is also to keep people happy at plan, right? Kushal mm -hmm. created this issue because he feels passionate about it and he wants to have uh, like right. his desk as clean as organized as possible, right? Right. So it's one way to do it and if, and if we, Sure. If we always have to push forward because we lack people, because we lack a lot of things, yeah, it's it's not going to okay. uh, end up as well as it could be. So, sure. yeah, Kushal, go for it. I, uh, I encourage you to to break it, maybe break it up in smaller uh, tasks or something like that, but have something. Yeah, I think it would be great. I'm just saying this, but Victor has... The final yeah, no, 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 no. I, I mean, that, that's why we're having this discussion, I, Pedro, so like... I, yeah, so like, uh, I, I understand, like, uh, in, in order to get this prioritized and, you know, like, uh, presenting it from the product perspective, like, hey, we are planning to do this refactor, but in order to basically sell it, it, it would make sense to have it broken down into multiple merge requests that can go across the releases. So uh, what right. I'll do is that I'll, I'll uh, do the technical breakdown, so uh, uh, the immediate thing that I can think of, uh, just, just thinking out loud, that what we can do is we create the shell part first instead of uh, adding all the items in the sidebar and call it one merge request. And uh, then we do another merge request that would add all the sidebar items. And then we do the third merge request that would add just the tests of the entire app. And uh, maybe break it down across three or even four merge requests and then uh, push it out every release. And yeah. uh, on, on, on the fifth iteration, what we do is that we combine it all and uh, just call the, basically close this meta issue in a way. Yeah, well, just create an epic. Well, I mean, I can create it for you, yeah. Michelle. Yeah. But if yeah. you want to do that, that that's, that's also great. I mean, that, that's better. And, yeah. um, and what in, just curious, in that case, would you have both apps living in prod at the same time? Yes, and because just what we, you, the, the new one will be turned off. And yes. Yes. Right? Yeah. And then can yeah. we even test it in prod? Like, could we just like type something in the console to turn it on? Yeah. 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 I'll I'll make sure like uh, the toggle switch is easy for anyone to just uh, check it out. Yeah. That I mean, no. No. That's, awesome. that, that's great. That's um, yeah. That's independent of me bugging Andre for more capacity. Um, yeah. yeah. That will definitely help. I think as as Pedro was saying. Yep. That would be great. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I want to see more. Uh, I, I love when people like uh, suggest like we should do this refactor or uh, we did this on this release, but it could be better. I know we can do better and I, I love it when we have this issue. So uh, I think we should do it more and like each release have something that we are working uh, to polish a bit more because we're not uh, satisfied with the quality. Um, that, I think that's, that puts a high standard and it's a good example for everyone on the team and also for outside of the team to the rest of the company. So thank you, Kushal. Yep.
Yep. Thanks, Kushal. Thanks, Pedro. All right. Um, we'll talk next time then. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.